how's it going everybody it is your favorite apostates i'm mckay and i'm jordan and today we got the capri blue pumpkin spice candle or whatever um somebody asked jordan on instagram if i like scented candles more than i would like to admit and no i don't like them more than i would like to admit i'm perfectly fine admitting that i love scented candles if you haven't tried capri blue candles their volcano scent super popular but the pumpkin one nobody talks about and it is the shit so Dang. anyway next piece of business we hit 25 thousand subscribers thanks to you beautiful people you are all amazing and just as promised we are planning on doing a giveaway um more details are going to come soon we're going to plan on doing it at the very start of december so keep an eye on next week's videos and we can get you more details it's about gonna be that. exciting um, from there, we'll get on to the main topic. That way we're just flowing right into it with this uh, amazing segue that I've prepared totally. So someone doesn't bitch about our intro <laughs> too long. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about the, what are they? Oh, the bucket list family. <laughs> no ones, apparently. Just kidding. Um, people get really mad because they're like, wow, you guys are just jealous of their success. Absolutely Definitely. not. Um, <laughs> Um, that was sarcastic so yeah just uh just with our experience we went to this uh thrive conference we Um, saw many of you there yeah we saw some of you there you know who you are if you talk to me a couple of you were a little it was so nice a little uh threatened to walk up to us but we are i swear that i swear we're just as scared to talk to you so um Imagine that, but multiply that by, you know, whatever scale it is to get to a million subscribers, which is where the bucket list family is at. Yeah. I don't, I don't want that kind of life. Anyway, um, the bucket list family. Uh, let's let's run it down. So you've, if you've been on Instagram for a minute, and if you follow any travel type vloggers or people. <clears throat> you've probably come across the bucket list family and you might have even seen photos of theirs and not realize who they are because these people have millions of followers on Instagram. They have millions of, followers, of subscribers too, on, right? On YouTube. Yeah. They so are they're kind super of popular. One. Yeah. We've kind of been transitioning over to the Instagram influencers, which I feel like they have more of a presence on Instagram, they do. but they also do have a massive presence on YouTube. So, and these people are double threat. Their Instagram feed is like a traveler's dream. Okay. It is like they've been anywhere yeah. and everywhere. So it's super enticing. And I mean, it's great that they've been to all these places. And yeah, that would be super yeah. cool. So we're definitely not hating think, on that. I think on their their website, they said like over 60 countries, which is wild. I've been to. It's crazy. Three outside of the US. I've been to one. <laughs> and one of them was Canada. So. I, I almost don't even count that one. <laughs> it's like, yeah, just hop across the the border in Glacier National Park. Wow. Anyway. Anywho, they are super popular and they are, in fact, Mormon. They are. So let's talk about their origins of Mormon enemy. Yeah. Um, I just made that Let's up. see. They're the Gee family. I think Guy is their or last G. name. G G G E E is how you spell their last name. I'm not really sure exactly how it is. Um, but the the dad, his name's Garrett. Um, he's like a Provo Bros wet dream. He's born in Provo and ended up going to BYU. Like, wow. If you think about like the crypto dude personality yeah, this type, this is absolutely crypto boro NFT bro kind of genre of guy. Also, he's a good looking guy. I'm not even gonna lie, he's fit as a motherfucker, and he's just a good looking guy. So he's really got it going for him. Honestly, went to BYU dropped out after he decided yep i've fulfilled my soccer uh, dreams because he was a big soccer player um and then his wife is actually from denver so shout out neighbor don't talk to us please <laughs> um 
Yeah, so she's from Denver, um, and according to their website, they both went on missions to Russia. Russia! Where they met. So they were serving in the same mission. Scandalous. And uh, apparently they just met in a bread shop, which seems like a convenient... A bread shop? uh, Brush, yeah. We met. I just want to make a side note (laughs) on... uh, Bread's dope. I mean, Uh, I don't see the problem. It's just kind of funny. (laughs) Um... I just want to make a side note about um, people meeting on their mission. My mission experience was my mission president and his upper, the the area presidency, drilling it into our heads that we were called, God called us to that specific place because our future spouses or eternal companions were not in that mission at that time and we would never brush paths with them adamant that that was the case um ironically enough it was not the case for a lot of people that i know personally (laughs) in the Um, family so it's kind of a weird dynamic when you go on missions because there are some mission presidents and higher up leaders who that's the belief that they try to drill into people that way they're not um distracted on their mission by by the, the opposite, opposite sex. sex Ooh. um but there's probably also missionary or mission presidents who are a lot less lax so just kind of interesting that they met on their mission and ended up getting married in my opinion but uh anyway so they both went to byu he dropped out after forming a company designing an app um, and selling it. This is just like um, a QR code scanner. It was called Scan. Wow. Original. Riveting. <laughs> Honestly, it, it wasn't anything that special, but they got bought out by Snapchat. So the reason you have Snap codes for your account and you can read QR codes on Snapchat is because they bought out this guy Garrett's company for 50 plus million dollars. And the secondhand information that I read on Reddit, this is secondhand and unconfirmable, okay? But there was somebody on Reddit who claims to have a husband who worked with this person and was considering buying into or buying the company. And she said this company was so mismanaged and kind of a disaster, so the investors were desperate for someone to buy it so that they could pass it off. So... We don't really know how... Yeah. I mean, according to everything I could read, they were bringing in like thousands of dollars daily right before they... And they had so many downloads of the app on both Android and iOS. So it did well. But honestly, it's not anything that was like groundbreaking and definitely wasn't something that was... He was on that stupid, what's that show, Shark Tank? Wasn't yep, he on that? They, they presented their, their idea on Shark Tank, and uh, I didn't see their decision. People said that they passed up on it, um, so they missed out, probably. I don't know what money that would have gone into, because the dude already had everything like coded out and everything, so I don't know what they were trying to get funding for at that point, but anyway, maybe just advertisements so they could, could be. make money and sell it off. So they come into a lot of money. Um, I think the the wife, uh, Jessica is her name. Um, I think she finished school and maybe even went on to grad school or something. I don't know. She was working in like uh, social media or or something like that. Anyway, but uh, I think in like 2015, they decided to start like traveling and things like that, obviously, because they had a shit ton of money. So here's the thing. Here's where I start to feel icky about things. OK, so this family decides that they want to travel full time. That's what they want to do. So they sell everything they have in a garage sale. Okay, they sell everything they have in order to go on this trip. So here's what they lead with. And most of these, like, in articles written about them and travel vlogs, and they lead with, we sold everything we had 
to go travel the world. And at first glance, you're like, whoa, that's crazy. That's crazy. Like, just this huge leap of faith. If I had $54 million, I'd also maybe yeah. travel the world. I read somewhere that it they sold their stuff for like 45000 or something, which is still a lot. Yeah. Well, if you have a whole ass family, yeah. it's not that much. But Yeah. So that's what they, they claim, right? And they also... I just think this is obnoxious. They say that they live off of, they've never had to touch the millions. Congrats. That's what they say is they've never had to touch that $54 million and they just live off of ad money, sponsorships, those type of things. And I just, (laughs) that doesn't make me like you more. No. Like gold star. Here's the thing. When you have money and you have it, invested or you know whatever which i would hope they don't just have it in a savings account because people with money don't do stuff like that great good for you maybe they can't even touch it maybe it's in anyway but when you have a lot of money and on occasion you do have to touch it it doesn't feel like you really touch it when you have no money and you have one financial situation come up it ruins you so, congrats. I, I don't really care. And pe- people are probably like, oh, you guys are just mad because they got a lot of money. No, I don't I care. I don't give a shit about that. Honestly. And they're far from wealthy amounts that a lot of other people have. They're just millionaires. There's billionaires out there. But, yeah. That doesn't make me feel any better about it. Like, yeah, good for you. Honestly. This is, like... The whole idea with travel vlogging is a lot of people like in the wake of things like van life and things like that starting to yeah. speed up. The whole idea was you sell everything that you have, right? And it just comes off misleading to me because it encourages people. I think it just sets yeah. an unrealistic expectation that if you sell everything you have, you can live their lifestyle. Yeah, Their lifestyle is unattainable if you don't have the amount of money, followers, ad revenue, sponsorships. Like, there's so much more to take into account than just selling all your shit and going to travel the world. Like, that's not how it works. Yeah. The difference between the average person doing that and them is if there was a major financial situation or, like, repair, medical emergency, you would have to stop. Whereas these people, they can just keep on going. Well, and here's the thing, too, is that you have all this money. And so this is the kind of thing that gets me, too, is you're rich beyond most people's wildest dreams. Like these people have more money than most of us plebeians will ever have in our lifetimes. Right. And so you have all this money and you can afford to travel. Like they can obviously afford to pay for hotels and, um, you know, airplane tickets and experiences. They can pay for all of those things personally. Like they don't need to have those things paid for them yet. 90% of their stuff is, gets comped because of the social media exactly and you'll see it on their instagram page and a lot of their followers have commented that this is kind of obnoxious because they don't pay for anything because they partner with hotels and they partner with disney world to stay there and document their experience and this is all because of the following they have so their followers make it possible for them to not have to pay anything for these experiences and so it's a little misleading this lifestyle and they would obviously say that we're not telling anybody that they can do what we do but at the same time i feel like it just sends the wrong message yeah it's it's lame it's shysty honestly because the people who okay so let's say you don't have millions of dollars you sell everything you have and you get fifty thousand dollars in a bank account you decide you're going to go travel the world you don't get free shit You have to pay for your hotels. You have to pay for your plane tickets. You have to pay for experiences. Like, you would have to spend money. So it wouldn't be very realistic for you to travel the world on that money because it wouldn't get you very far. So it kind of sets this whole expectation that if you, you know, if you sell 50000 like if you sell your shit for $50,000, then you're set. Like, you're good to go. Go travel the world. When that's not realistic. Yeah. They, They do a lot of weird stuff. Um, that I, I don't like that. I totally forgot that we've been talking about this one for a little while, just kind of going back and forth. Um, 
the other misleading thing about their Instagram, and this is why everybody comes to us with the bucket list family. There's lots of people who have asked us to cover them before. Yeah. And here's the thing. They're not super problematic. We've covered more people who are beyond problematic than yeah, these guys. Outwardly problematic. However, they're still Mormon. And so they got married in the temple. They went through all the culty temple ceremonies, just like we did. And they were instructed to wear the garments, the Mormon underwear, just like we were. Yet you look at their Instagram page and you won't see garments anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere to be found. And let me be clear. We're not like, oh my, oh, they're Mormon. They need to be wearing their garments because the same Mormons who are ultra Orthodox are like, they're Mormon and they don't wear their garments and they're clutching their pearls. We just like to point it out because with some of the other Instagrammers that we'll be talking about in the future, it's weird how people who have a lot of influence seem like they have the authority or permission to kind of adjust things that they want. Because like we've talked about in, um, I don't know, I don't remember what video we were talking about the, the garment, but you go in and they tell you that you have to wear this night and day for essentially any time that you possibly can that's not like showering so or swimming yeah or doing it that's it those are the those are like the exceptions or working out about that but um well not even working out really a lot of people work out i worked out in my garments people do yard work in their garments so you are intensely instructed to wear these things and in the world of mormon your bishop is always asking you yes wearing them when he does your your interviews and everything like that so yeah in order to get into the temple you have to it's an interview question that they ask you are you wearing your garments all the time yeah your your average mormon if you ask them hey are you wearing their garments they would be like why wouldn't i most mormons don't even have (laughs) other underwear that is all they have because that's just what you wear all the time true story so when people (laughs) take license to just change something like that that's such an intense thing a lot of people take note and it's weird and you know i more power to them in my opinion if you're not gonna let your church dictate what underwear you wear that is excellent good good for you it just is funny that some people can take that kind of license and it's most just the, people can it's the bizarre thing about instagram influencers and, and it's the one thing that's a pretty common thread through a lot of them is not wearing the garments yeah and so it's just interesting because we see this pattern happening with basically the most of them it's like this whole we're mormon and a lot of them will demonstrate that they're very much mormon but then they don't wear garments but we're above that yeah we We, can alter do that we can not follow that rule but yet we still are members and go to the temple and have to answer that question so are you lying? And, and I feel like part of it is like we are Mormon, but it's not our brand and we don't want it to affect our brand outwardly. Because exactly. um, I feel like maybe a lot of people aren't really in the know that they're Mormon. I read their bio on their website. I don't know who the hell else is doing that. <laughs> I could be wrong. A lot of people probably do and they're like, oh, that's interesting. They're not Mormon, but don't know about that aspect or don't know about the creepy rituals that go on in the temple and like no informed consent for children who are getting baptized signing a document that if you were to rescind in the future could in some cases result in you needing to get a lawyer things like that so so it's interesting because it's interesting. some of these and i think there's we haven't followed i don't follow them so it's not like i've been able to see them like transition over time But some of the people that we talked to said they were more outwardly open about being Mormon in the beginning. But as they've transitioned and become more popular, it seems like they've scrubbed, at least their Instagram, of any indication that they're Mormon, which is interesting. Yeah. Because the whole, like, the whole PR campaign and the whole brand of Mormonism, like, for years, it was demonstrating that you are outwardly Mormon as much as you possibly can. Yeah. The so, whole I'm a Mormon campaign. Yes. And, hey, everybody look at Brandon Flowers. Everybody look at the drummer for Neon Trees. Everybody and, look at Al Fox Caraway. She has yeah. tattoos and she's Mormon. Like, it is a whole freaking thing. And that's the, it's the same thing with garments. Like, they... 
Yeah. Mormonism is like you're identified by the fact that you dress modestly. And so there is a brand within Mormonism for a reason. And they expect members, they enforce yeah. this rule that members are supposed to conform to this. And so it's interesting how they've essentially scrubbed everything that would make them seem Mormon because you would look at their Instagram and you would have no freaking idea. No clue. Which is very contrary to what Mormonism is. Because when we were growing up, you told everyone. Your neighbors, schoolmates, teachers, like, you told everyone. Yeah. Like, you, the whole point of Mormonism was everybody in the neighborhood knew that the Mormons lived there. Because you had to be a missionary. Because you had to be a missionary. And you had to... Put on your best face so that people would want to join and learn about Jesus's gospel. My mom still, and I mean, my mom lives in Utah, so it's a lot more common, but she used to do this when we lived in Colorado too. Everybody knew that my family was Mormon because my mom would make Christmas treats for like our entire street and two streets over. And everybody knew she was Mormon and it was just the standard Mormon thing. And so it's interesting to see these Instagram influencers, how some of them totally embrace the Mormon brand and they, you know, they take pictures in front of the temple and they share their temple wedding videos and they're teaching you how to be modest, like with cute clothes. And then you have people like this who are like, there is nothing about our brand that would. It's incongruent with our brand. So our manager is like, just let it go. You can practice it in private kind of situation so here's the thing there's also the possibility that they aren't active or they've left the church that's also a very real possibility a lot of people faith crises and leaving the religion of your childhood and you're growing up is an intimate thing and so and very common especially in these last few years and people within their age group and so very i mean It could be that they left very easily. Um, But that's not the vibe I get. And it's still, the message still stands that there's this whole thing within Mormonism that true blue Mormons always talk about. Cafeteria Mormons. So you pick the things about Mormonism that you like and you do away with the rest. Yeah. And the cafeteria Mormons, which is typically what progressive Mormons or people on the fringe of Mormonism were called, it's a shameful thing. It's shame-based. It's yeah. telling people that, like, you know, you're shitty because you just pick the pieces that you like and you don't have to follow the rest of the rules. Rather than conforming to the orthodoxy. Exactly. So that could be exactly what this is, too. And we see that with a lot of these influencers is they pick the things about Mormonism that they like, like the charity, the, you know, family-centered. The service. The, the and, cute temple pictures. Like, yeah. we keep those things. But then we do away with the things that wouldn't necessarily be flattering to our brand, like wearing garments. Yeah. So that it's kind of interesting. I don't know if there I don't know how you would even confirm if they're still practicing unless you personally knew someone who knew them. It'd be hard. It, there was It wouldn't really matter anyway, but There I don't remember where I saw it, but there was at least one, I think it was an Instagram post or something. It might have been on their blog where they talked about how um they did try to go to church in the places that they were traveling to. Oh, and I don't remember how long ago that was, but that was a thing. At one point, they were making an effort to attend LDS churches in the countries that they were that they were visiting. So that it more leads me. Colonizer-y. It is, but that more <laughs> leads me to believe that they are maybe just not as active, but still identify as yeah. Mormons, right? Yeah, I'm not going to be the one to say, "Oh, it's binary, get in or." stay in or get out or whatever so they can do what they want it's just important that people realize like if they are funding people like this if they're supporting them where their money could end up which is in the coffers of the mormon church or more accurately stated in the investment fund of the mormon church so that's the people are like what is the whole point of you calling out mormon influence and you know like losing their shit over it and here's the thing mormon church and you would will say this a million times over, and if you've been with us for a minute, you've heard us say it a million times, is the Mormon church causes harm. They constantly cause harm to many, many people and many specific populations and many specific marginalized groups of people. Yep. And so they're going to continue to do that. Nothing's going to change. And so when you give these influencers your money, these Mormon influencers... A percentage of it will eventually end up there. They are required 
to pay 10% of their income to the church. It's a question in the temple interviews in order to get to the temple. Are you paying 10%? And sure, there might be some people that are like, I don't pay tithing and I'm a Mormon. But if you answer no in those temple interviews, you're not getting in. That's a hard stop one where they will not let you get in. And in some cases, there have been bishops who have required you to pay back tithing in order if you stop enter the ten- temple if you yeah like my grandmother had to back pay because she missed she struggled financially missed two or three months in order to get her temple recommended again she had to pay all the money from those three previous months in order to get back in so this is not something that they like loosely interpret within the church yeah so what we're saying to you is these people potentially are paying 10 percent of whatever they're making which is a lot to the Mormon church that continually oppresses people like the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah. Potentially 10% of that sale of their, their company because um, he made that app with his BYU classmates who are more than likely Mormon also. So there's a $5.4 million minus taxes, but still that is a, that's a huge donation. That's a massive (laughs) contribution. And so you're giving these people your money, which is, inherently being donated to the church and remember what the church does with their money they don't do anything with their money they do two percent of their money acts of service when they could like solve world hunger with the billions of dollars they have in an investment fund require church members to clean the church buildings to clean the temples they don't eat they pay minimum wage to the people who work in their stores so this is a much larger issue and so you're by following these people you're aligning with people who don't agree with gay marriage Potentially. Yep. So just keep these well, things in mind. Yeah. And, and some of the influence will say, will say, yes, we support the LGBTQ plus community. But if they're paying tithing, they support an organization that is actively against everything that they supposedly stand for. And so discriminate it's against. To remember that. Remember, the church actively campaigns and pours thousands and thousands upon thousands of dollars in California when the whole legalized gay marriage thing was going on. So the church lobbies with that money. Yeah. So you can be as much of an LGBTQ plus supporter all you want until that money is directly going to oppress the individuals that you supposedly support. So, yeah, we are, this is one that will ruffle a few feathers in the, progressive mormon post-mormon community where you can be an ally and still be in the church i if you pay tithing to the church you can't i'm sorry that i am i'm gonna stick with that there might be some nuance there like you this has been an ongoing argument within that community within the progmo community for a long time because when we were progressive mormons we thought we were allies too but the reality of it is if you listen to most of the members of the LGBTQ plus community. And we have many of those who are friends yeah. with us will, who will actively and emphatically tell you that you can't do both. Yeah. So that's the point of these things. Side tangent while we're, we're talking about yeah. that, but I just <laughs> wanted to emphasize that that's what we're doing. And that's why we're doing this because you might be, if you don't want to actively support the Mormon church, then you might not want to support these people. Just a thought. Just a thought. Um, let's move on. There's some weird things in their videos. Um, namely, the one thing that I came across that I thought was so weird that they did, and there was a couple of articles that came out about it. Um, last year, um, they put up a vlog, and I'll kind of just put in a little clip of this maybe while I'm talking or something. Um, but they were... The, the parents were snowboarding and... Jess, uh, I think Jess, Jessica, whatever her name was, Jennifer, Jessica, Jessica, <clears throat> and Jessica apparently got injured. So the whole vlog, like the vlog was titled something along the lines of, oh, mom got hurt and needs the helicopter. The whole vlog is just like happy go lucky. Hey, we're going snowboarding in Utah. Cool. Whatever. For like 15 minutes. And then just the last little bit. She gets injured and he's camera rolling, like racing up the the mountain to her. And then like this really convenient shot of him like hitting the snow as she's airlifted away. 
it was just the weirdest thing. They fades the, to black. Yeah, fades to black with a to be continued. I'm like, what the fuck? Who does that? First of all, if Jordan was hurt, camera's down. I'm getting it taken care of. That's the last thing on my mind. I don't know whose wife gets hurt. And they're like, yep, I got a vlog. We're vlogging right now. It's Family content. vlogger style right yeah. here. So everybody got mad because there was I th- not until like the next video, which was like a week later, did they address anything. I mean, they have the proper channels to say things. They posted things on Instagram. They posted on their Instagram yeah. stories like she's being airlifted to the hospital and we can't talk yeah. about it right now. And then they just left it. They didn't say anything. And I, I acknowledge they have the right to their privacy. Sure. That's awesome. But like you have to understand that people, they have cultivated this parasocial relationship with people who are like ultra invested and then you just like cut it off. Like I would think that if this was going on, they would wait until things were resolved, then release the video. That way it wasn't such a thing. But sounds like a clickbaity money grab and their fans were losing their shit because yeah, they, they posted it on instagram mad. and they, it was a total cliffhanger and here's the thing all these videos that were taken of the event were posted after the event happened right like way after so so there was no need to put like a like cliffhanger generating buzz it was absolutely generating a buzz and it was so disrespectful to their fans because these are people who are yeah. actually legitimately concerned about these people and then they throw out this cliffhanger and be like oh yeah she was airlifted to a hospital and we're just not going to tell you anything else yeah and their fans kind of gave them shit for this and they were like oh well we have a right to privacy and you know, yeah. that's true. If, if you're going to par- cultivate this relationship, then however, you've not be shitty. You can't do people. it like a fucking reality TV show and then not expect people to be pissed off about it. Yeah. Like, come on. So that was interesting. So they're getting their fans have also. In the threads that I was reading about them, there's a lot of previous fans who have stopped following them because they feel like they're super clickbaity with everything now. Like they're yeah. all of their titles are very clickbaity. It's very, even though they're primarily, I feel like primarily Instagram influencers, they do have YouTube videos and things, but they're, I bet their primary money comes from, from Instagram. Yeah. It's family vlogger shit. It's total 100% family vlogger yeah. shit. Like you can't, the similarities between them and the family vloggers we've already covered, they do like identical things. Yeah. The and other we, we haven't even touched on the the classic, they are exploiting their children's stories and privacies for money. So absolutely. That's all I'm going to say about that because we get into it every time. But it's one of the things that will automatically make me not give a shit about what you're doing. So they fall, they fall into that category just like everybody else. Each of their children have channels through their, like, yeah. each of their individual children, like, even ones, like, under the age of four, four have their own channels. No, y'all. That's not no, it. That's not it. No. So they fall into that same damn category, even though they're primarily on Instagram, and that's usually their forum. They do some YouTube, yeah. too. They're still doing the same shit. Same thing. They fall into every other f-ing family vlogger category. They're yeah. not unique. So that's a, I mean, that's an obvious no-no with us. If you've watched us. Not a fan of that. No. Don't exploit your children for money. Nope. So the other interesting thing that happened with this family that generated a lot of buzz and actually caused them to lose a lot of, a lot of fans was a giveaway that they did. So they did a giveaway huge holiday massive sweepstakes thing where they were I don't remember what they were giving away but it it was a lot I'm pretty sure it was like a trip and hotels and airfare and all kinds of shit so it was people were invested like this a was a decent write off yeah <laughs> really so it was a people were interested like there was a lot of buzz about this right so the problem with this situation is they did, let's see, it was like 12 Christmas surprises. So it was in the month of December. Um, and so on their little giveaway post, they give like really simple instructions on what they needed to do to enter. So they said, all you need to do is like this post and then share your post on the Instagram stories. 
That was it. Super simple, Seems right? pretty simple. But, and I can't remember who figured it out. I vaguely remember seeing this when it happened and somebody, I don't know if it was like a lawyer or someone familiar with legal ease and that looked at the actual legal terms and conditions that they have to give for entering this giveaway that was on their website. And the website's legal terms and conditions stated that they must be following and tagging the required accounts, filling out the required forms. Nobody was filling out any forms. So they were intentionally misrepresenting the entrance so that nobody would win. Sounds pretty shitty to me. And it's a follower play. Like, you have to be following us. And so people are seeing that they're doing this massive giveaway and who wouldn't want it? And so if all you have to do is share and like it, people are going to be like, oh, frick, yeah, I'm just going to follow like we're done. I'll get all the people in my family to do it. Yeah. Easy. Easy. So they gained lots of followers during this whole thing. So people started figuring it out, right? And so people started commenting, like, can you help clarify how you're choosing the family for this trip? In the caption, it says that you only need to like and share. Like, comments started popping up of people being confused about how to enter. So <laughs> they also said that the the winners, they're going to announce the winners between December 10th and December 21st, um, which means that it was done on the 21st, right? So no more entries, no more liking, no more following. Like, that's it. So... They were still having people enter to win after that date. So even after the contest is over and the entry period is over, they were still getting like shit tons of followers, right? So (laughs) the person, and I can't remember what her credentials were, but the person who basically clarified that they weren't following the rules you know emphasize that when you're doing these kinds of things you need to be totally transparent and clear in every single post and continually link the official rules of how to enter back to your website and instead they just got a shit ton of followers and a bunch of engagement Woohoo! and possibly nobody went on a trip yeah so, and I don't know, I'm sure they had, I'm sure they had to pick somebody. Uh, I, yeah. They had to. If it was going to be that big of a ship show, I would imagine that they were like, F- it, just pick someone and then we can exactly. be done with it. And the, pre- the person who was calling them out for all this shit, she got blocked. Okay. Of course. Um, and they, the. Classic. The two of them, I don't know who runs the Instagram account, but they started deleting comments. Nice. So. <laughs> Side note, if you think I've deleted your comment, I have not. It we has been automatically comments. flagged and hidden. I don't delete comments. Fun fact. I try to go and restore them unless you're being a dickhead other than that. Like if you're calling out other people and being inappropriate, then we won't approve your Looking comment. at you, Joanne. God, Joanne, are you still here? Probably not. Um, so the North and South video still. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have to watch the rest. <laughs> what about Sandra? Is Sandra still here? Okay, so the whole point of this is they gained half a million followers by doing this whole giveaway thing, which equates to, remember, their Instagram thing is what my assumption would be their primary income source. Their primary source of revenue is what's happening on Instagram because they spend the majority of their time on there. Yeah. And so remember, when they do sponsored posts and things, it's typically based on your reach. And so... When you get a half a million followers overnight nowhere. in a few weeks, that generates a ton of ad revenue for you. That generates a ton because your sponsors are going to start paying you more because you have more yep. followers. More sponsored opportunities. More engagement. Like, that's the whole thing. So... It's misleading because of those 500,000 people, they all think that they're going to be entered into this giveaway, but they're not. This generated a whole ton of buzz, and I'm pretty sure the person who figured it all out was a lawyer. I'll put her, we'll put her handle somewhere um, because I'll I'll find it. But this was a disaster. This whole thing was a disaster, and it caused a PR nightmare 
for them. It's, it's really shitty, honestly. And you'll see, we've done it in the past. Like, there are laws when it comes to sweet steaks. And individual platforms have their own rules and guidelines that you need to follow when you're doing it. I guarantee you that that is that whatever they did was a hundred percent against um instagram community guidelines or whatever they call it on instagram well and the shady thing was is once people started calling them out they went and edited those captions easy yeah so that's not cool plus you're deleting comments like that's just shady shit like you could have i mean you could have even played stupid you could have been like, oh, we didn't realize, didn't realize that yeah. we needed to link to this to comply with Instagram guidelines. So here we're going to repost yeah. and people are still going to enter like it. You wouldn't have taken a hit. People aren't going to give a shit. So don't know why they did that. They really, really shysty. I'm pretty sure I didn't read the article, but they did get covered by BuzzFeed and I'll I'll mckay will put up the title but a popular instagram family who travels the world is being accused of hiding details of a massive holiday sweepstakes um obviously buzzfeed is not like a bastion <clears throat> of truth but no and i don't it's buzzy so i don't know if they were the only ones that covered it but that was one of the first ones that i had seen but yeah. i'm pretty sure i didn't read the whole article but i'm pretty sure they ended up if they don't have a lawyer on a retainer they hired a lawyer to if if you have more than five hundred thousand people following you, you or should subscribe have a lawyer. You, you should have management. You should have a lawyer. So. Um, and so I'm pretty sure their lawyer made a statement and said, you know, we did nothing wrong. And that's what a lawyer does. Good job. <laughs> so yeah, they never, you know, a lot of their fans came to their defense and were like, they're just trying to do a nice thing. No, no monetary no. gain whatsoever. No, no we- incentive. They may have complied with Instagram's legal terms, either before or after, whatever. Yeah. And we're not arguing that. We're not saying that they're doing anything illegal, but we are saying it was just shady and shitty. Like, that's just what it was. Yeah. If you're going to be hiding things, whether it's legal or not, it's still lying. And good for you. you the scriptures that you guys talked about on your missions where you met, allegedly, you the book of mormon says woe unto the liar for he shall be thrust down to hell in second nephi so that's lying so anyway if that's the kind of uh thing that you're okay with then go ahead and follow the the bucket list family but you we we have laid out why you know that you should use caution on the Maybe people that you follow. Reconsider. Reconsider. If you don't want to align yourself with the standards of the Mormon church and the harm that it does to people, past and present, then maybe reconsider, reconsider supporting some of the Mormon people you some follow. Of these people. Anyway, that is our two cents for the day. Our The conclusion to this saga on the Bucket List family. Um, if you're sticking, if you stuck around, thank you for watching. Um, it's been nice having you. Last week, we showcased the new merch. Go and check it out down in the description. Teespring. Um, I'll put it back at the top again. We still have uh, orders rolling in for our Etsy. If you want to check out some of the stickers that we have, um, they are much higher quality than we could get on Teespring. That's why they're in separate stores. So it's true. check that out. We have Patreon. If you want to support us there, you can also uh, buy us a coffee on Coffee Ko-Fi down in the description. Shout out to the Discord I have been neglecting. Um, I always pop in and just kind of catch up every now and then, but the Discord is dope and I invite everybody to go check it out. Other than that, follow us on our socials. You can find us at Jordan and McKay on Instagram and TikTok. We've been doing a lot of fun stuff on Instagram lately. We've been doing a yeah. lot of Q and A's and a lot of like Jordan existential has discussions, it. which has been really interesting. So go hop over there because we do fun stuff over there. Yeah. So follow us there. Details on giveaways to come and uh get excited get excited other than that thank you for watching and we will see you next time